much more reliable. Uh, team, you know, team lineup started with, you know, an absence of a second healer. I'd really feel more comfortable with a second healer, and you can solo heal with Anna, but, and this is where I get sort of brutally honest, coffee slut. I do not think our Anna is at the point yet where we could solo heal reliably. Um, we're just we're not quite accurate enough. Our healing isn't quite snappy enough to warrant the confidence in a single Anna pick. So I, I like actually asking for a second healer because honestly, we're not awful in terms of like our moment to moment decision making necessarily. We could be more proactive in trying to just get more healing out consistently, trying to make sure that we aren't just standing around not doing anything because anytime we're not doing things, we are effectively dead. You know, we're not actually contributing to the fight. So if our team is fighting and we are stood around doing nothing, blah, 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 blah. We seem to have a moment of confusion. I think um, your friend here in the duo queue points out where you should go, which is nice. So it's not down here. Although you can actually get to where you need to be if you go down here. Um, but where we want to be is on the crossfire. And I'll talk about why the crossfire is so good. So we want to be up there. So Zarya is doing a good job as well of clearing the barricades. And so Zarya comes along. Hello, Zarya. Aren't you helpful? And points us out. Yeah, we want to go through here. We want to go through here because it's nice and safe for us. So to get to us, the enemy team has to basically, you know, let's let's cover why this is so. Good. Okay. So this is like the normal. This is the standard. And in say in a bronze game, this you know the standard sort of breaks down a little bit, but it would still apply. Like if everyone was playing to the same rules and if, if everyone's playing the standard properly, then it would be fine. But it turns out that this Torbjorn is way too effective. Um, spoiler. So. Why is this so strong? Well, if you think about how the enemy team is going to get to us, it, we've got to be a little bit careful when we're stood like right here because there is a sight line to see us. So what I like to do is maybe occasionally peek this way and just see what I can see coming through here. And then I will tuck in a little bit towards this pillar. Um, use this pillar as a little bit of cover in case anyone comes this way. And then I have clean line of sight over here. I can go and help anything over here. And to get to us, what often happens is the team will either run out here, get a Winston, and the Winston will jump up. Ideally, you have a Soldier 76 here as well. And so what you do is when the Winston jumps on you, you, put a, you throw a grenade, you hit both you and Soldier 76. 76 puts his heal field down. Winston cannot kill you. He cannot. He just can't. And then you just shoot him and kill him. And you win. Um, and that works incredibly well. And while this is all happening, your team is hopefully doing other things. This fight's happening elsewhere. The Torbjorn is doing something proactive. Um, it's very, very strong. It's difficult to dislodge this. The enemy team has to come in with the Winston and a Genji and a Tracer or something like that. Has to get really aggressive on you to be able to displace you from this. That's why this position is so strong. It also just means we're nice and flexible so we can tuck in more this way. So if you see a Fara coming in up and over, you can tuck in more towards this wall. And you can be relatively safe for the Farah. So to get to you, the Farah has to be flying around like all the way out here in the open, which is vulnerable for the Farah. So that's actually quite a nice tip as well if they have a Farah. Um, otherwise, yeah, let's, let's play the tape. The reason why we clear these barricades is going to become very clear very soon because I just I want to point out like MVP for the enemy team. I'll really make sure that we're highlighting it properly. This chat. This V here is going to is going to cost us dearly. Um, the I wish Blizzard would either make it so that shots penetrate through these, so that when you fire when you like when they get hit and destroyed, the shot goes through anyway, or just get the fuck rid of them because they do block bullets. Good healing on the Lucio. It's a little bit risky to be doing that, but because we haven't seen anything, like the the safe play here. It's just putting a heal grenade on the Lucio. Lucio shouldn't be here anyway. This is not a good position for Lucio to be in. Because what this means is if we have to heal him, we have to run all the way up to the edge. And I want to imagine a world where the enemy team has a Widowmaker. If we run to the edge like this, we just get headshot and die. If they have a Soldier 76 down here, we can get shot and die. We have to sort of run out and expose ourselves just to heal this Lucio, who... What, what the fuck is he realistically going to be doing, right? He's down here. He's, their tank comes around the corner. He fires a couple of shots into them and then something happens i don't know um so the lucio is realistically not doing much oh i can see that people are subbing it's really annoying because it doesn't drop down unless you hit that share button so make sure you're hitting that share button so i know as well because people are subbing and i want to i want to acknowledge that the people are subbing because it's very supportive and it's very nice fuck fences in this game i saw this and i just thought <laughs> What 
what the hell? And th this is this is just ah, oh, it broke my heart because it's th this would have been a really good heal grenade as well. You might have actually managed to get the Reinhardt there. It might be a little bit too late, but I saw this and I just thought, you know, I saw this coming because you see him like he backs off. Reinhardt's stuck in there. We back off a little bit too far, like away from the flight anyway, so we're a little bit too far now to be able to help. And I see this and I go, he's going to throw that straight at the fence. In my, he my head just goes, yeah, he's, he's right into the fence. He doesn't realize he has to aim it even higher because the fence is the way I'll come in even further. Right into the fence. If that landed, you could have got your Reinhardt. You could have got their Reinhardt. I think you might have got their Orisa and done damage, made them anti-healed. Uh, the Torbjorn would have been really effective. Your Reinhardt could have survived. You could have followed up with some healing on him. There's no way that they out-DPS your healing plus Lucio's. Um, could have completely changed the game. One fence. And you see that he's frustrated about it, and it, rightly so. Luckily, the Torbjorn is just, like, killing everything. Because he tries to break these. It's a very annoying fact about Numbani. These fences, the sort of the slopey ones, don't break. So these ones don't break. These ones do. And this is why at the beginning of every single game, you will see me walking around meleeing every single fence. Because if you don't, that happens. And it's frustrating and boring and annoying, and I wish they would get rid of it. There's no better highlight of, like, this is a bronze level game. It shouldn't, the fence shouldn't be the difference between people dying and living, but it is. If this Junkrat thinks that he's ever going to get healing, ignore this, ignore this complete fool. Ignore this complete moron. Um, to heal this Junkrat, you would have to A, drop down, B, run all the way around the back, and then come all the way over here, and then you'd be able to heal him. He ain't getting healed. He ain't getting healed, ladies and gentlemen. If you are in a flanking position away from your team, you ain't getting shit, friendo. Um... Now we're a little bit concerned. Now that the Junkrat bombs and their team are coming through, this is when, like, I want to just draw attention to this. This is when I want to talk about pre-healing. Like, we're just standing here. So we can see the Junkrat bombs coming in. We take a couple of steps back and we're not healing anything. We could just be healing this Torbjorn. We know that the grenades are going to land next to him. He wants to stand next to his turret. If we just put healers onto him, he can actually stand closer to his turret. Now he's scared to go to near his turret because he's taking damage. We could just make sure he's that little bit longer. And we, we haven't even healed him. He's hurt. He's standing in front of us. Why aren't we healing him? Why, why, aren't, why aren't we healing him? Why aren't we healing him? Heal the man! He's still hurt. He still needs healing. Heal him. It costs us nothing. And I think we're just, I don't know, we're thinking maybe about dealing damage. As Anna, damage, damage is passed. Damage was last patch. Damage, damage is gone. Um, don't, don't ever think about that. I like the grenade down here. That's fine. Um, like... You see a bunch of people who are orange, and especially if it's someone like Lucio. I don't know if that grenade even hit him. I think it did. Uh, but if it's another support and they get to critical, grenade them is absolutely fine, especially on a Lucio, because that makes his own healing sort of a lot stronger on himself. So it's very, very good. Um, so that's fine, but eventually I think he gets healed up by the Lucio. We could have just healed him. We, could, we can heal this man. We can we could have kept him alive there. We don't have to be scared about one Junkrat bomb. And that he, like, he goes, get down, Mr. President, and jumps his little dwarf self in front of the bomb. We could just heal him. I don't know why we're this scared. We could absolutely heal that. We should be definitely, like, moving around here, scope in to just confirm the heals on this guy. We do manage to get the left click on him, which is impressive. Um, which is a nice bit of shooting there. And now we can just take our time here. Scope in, fire the shots. In general, like, I will say that you want to be scoping in when you have, whenever you get a free moment to just scope in, fire those shots out, and sort of go from there. Beautiful dart. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful dart. I mean, the Reinhardt fucked up. Um, like, it's luck, but it works. Why is it luck? Because a sensible, sane human being wouldn't drop his barrier here for any fucking reason. I think he might be going for a charge, just judging by the blur of pixels I kind of see. I think this is at about 5k, 6k stream bitrate, so it's kind of hard to make out at times. But the fact that he does it means we get the sleep, we get a grenade on the Lucio. This is honestly a moment for us to scope in and try and hit the Lucio. We should absolutely be scoped in and try and hit the Lucio. Right now we're just left clicking our Reinhardt barrier. Anna deals 60, uh, 60 damage per shot, has 10 ammo in her clip. So if you fire off all 10, you've done 600 damage. Reinhardt Barrier has 2,000 hit points. We need a total of 3.3333333 clips. I think. 
um, to get through it. So to empty her, and it identifies at just under um, a second a shot. So 0.9 seconds. So 0.9 times 10. So I'd say it takes, yeah, it'll take a good um, 30 seconds-ish. Just ball, spitballing. Spitballing. About 30 seconds for us to kill the Reinhardt barrier. Assuming that no one else is helping us. Okay, it's a bit of an extreme example, but we're never getting through that barrier on our own. We've got a purple Lucio who's busy doing Lucio things. He's bouncing all over the place. The value target for us here, when no one's threatening us, we can take our time, we could scope in, shoot at the Lucio a little bit, maybe get a shot or two on him, look for people that might need healing down here as well, because these guys aren't really doing anything threatening. And go from there. We should absolutely be thinking about healing now, we should be trying to maybe get a heal or two on this Reinhardt before he gets out of line of sight. Just top him off. Fine using the grenade for that, that works. Lucio should now top him off. I'm okay actually with us shooting the Reinhardt instead, because again Lucio's down there providing healing. And this is honestly, this point is done. We're just now topping people off, building people up as much as we can. And honestly our accuracy isn't that bad. Like, I'd say, you know, it could always be better. And in terms of like snap shooting, rapid firing out shots, we could be doing a lot more. We could be a lot more proactive. Um, I'd like to see us use the scope a little bit more, just to be that little bit more accurate. We could definitely use the scope to deal with stuff like this. Like, this tire isn't scary. And I don't understand why we run away from it. You see this. Like, I see this. I scope in and I fire a single shot at it. If we deal 60 damage to it, the turret only has to deal 40. Someone else only has to deal 40. It's very easy for us to deal with it. Um, if everyone just takes a moment to just shoot at it, and we just sort of miss the first shot, but honestly, we could probably take our time and fire off a second shot. Nothing is threatening us. We can take our time to do that. It'll take forever for the tire to get all the way over here, and I don't think the tire could even make it that far with the turret up anyway, but that's just me making a judgment call, I guess. The Reinhardt's going in. That's what we should be paying attention to. I do like the fact that we tried to catch the Junkrat, though. Like, I think we were trying to pre-heal before the Junkrat coming around the corner. Unfortunately, he's already dead, Jim. Um, but we do want to be paying attention to this Reinhardt. And my thought is this. Like, when watching this situation unfold, it's... The Junkrat here needs healing, but he's kind of in a shit location, so he might not make it. This is grenade territory for us. And honestly, I would probably be peeling this way. So I could try and get a grenade behind this Reinhardt, because their team is ideally, hopefully, pushing behind this Reinhardt. Like, that's what you would expect to be happening right now. Our Reinhardt gets a charge in it, and we were completely not ready for, like, the Reinhardt to do anything. If we got a grenade on that Reinhardt during that charge, that is a lot safer. And then we're just shooting over here for some reason. We're trying to get... Are we trying to get rid of this bit of fence? No. Well, we are now, but yeah, you can't you can't break the slanty fences, unfortunately. Um, but go we're transitioning back to healing. We should definitely be transitioning to healing now. That's actually an okay nano because everyone's stuck inside here. We should absolutely be looking to grenade this. I'd say grenade more than sleep. Why grenade more than sleep? Because if you get anti healing on all of this, none of them are recovering from that. Reinhardt's already in there with a nano boost. You got a Zarya dealing damage anyway, and you're also going to heal up the half health person here, which might be the Lucio. It's hard to make out. Yeah, it was a Lucio. So just getting a grenade into that would have been very nice because you're basically getting all of their team purple. Their healers are now not doing anything. You can just focus on keeping your team alive and um, keeping your people up and running, and it works so much better. You notice. Like, I think we got the D.Va there, but we could have got so much more out of that. They're all clumped up. Grenades are good when they're clumped up. Dorbjorn. Man moaning it up. Molten cord. Enemy team can't push into it, though. Feels good, man. We're just triaging at this point. We might want to snap off, might want to scope in a shot for the D.Va or two, but it doesn't matter too much. Free the Torbjorn a little bit if necessary. Bit of a risky sleep dart. Good grenade on that. Just let's get rid of that. The McCree or whatever. I think that was the Junkrat that was low, because I don't think we have a McCree. Um, yeah, Junkrat down there, he can go and look after himself, he's fine, we're all fine, reset on high ground. Unfortunately, we take a step forward trying to break a, an unbreakable bit of fence and we fall off. Let's get back to the high ground, feels good, man. Yeah, I know it's a bit blurry, guys, but I wanted to do this anyway because it, it gives me like a good avenue to talk a lot about fundamentals. Yeah, I like the fact that we scoped in there just to take a look that way. You, We've missed someone going on the flank, though. It's very important to pay attention to stuff like this. I gave Jimmy a ton of shit for this, um, so I'll give you some shit for this. Uh, <laughs> you see this blue beam? Might be a little bit vague, but the Torbjorn turret is locked onto something, put a giant blue beam. 
And you can see over here, there's a peg leg. There's a sneaky, sneaky Australian. Australians often are sneaky, in my experience. Damn criminals, the lot of them. Uh, yeah, Junkrat flanking around the side. We sort of want to be a bit worried about that. And you can see our Torbjorn's going around it. And we're asking about voice. Now's not the time. And then, in the single funniest moment I think I've ever seen in a game of Overwatch. In the distance, get ready for a shock. You see Torbjorn running, and then we go, oh shit, and then have to run away as well. Um, what made me laugh about this was, it just it reminds me of like the joke, you know, if you see the bomb squad running, run faster. Torbjorn's gone to deal with a Junkrat. And then suddenly, like, this Torbjorn just runs away on half hit points. And it's like, what, what? Ah! 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 And that, that for me was just very comical. I don't know. I, I found that very funny. Because, I don't know, it's just like the Torbjorn running away instead of facing him. It's like, oh shit, we gotta run too. But yeah. That's just sort of us missing that, hey, he was back there. I mean, he only gets the turret anyway. He goes for a turret instead of going for us, which is silly, and then no one gets on the point, because bronze. What would I say to this person? The biggest issue you have is not being active full time. Um, like, if you watch your footage and then you put it next to, you know, and you go and watch, um, you can watch me play Anna, you can watch better people than me play Anna, like Dummy on NRG, uh, Gail Adelaide, um, any pro support, I'm sure, um, playing Anna. Just watch anyone. You'll notice how rarely we're just standing around not doing anything. We're always just putting healing into things. We're always scoping in and out, always looking for opportunities to provide some heals to stuff. And this guy got play of the game, but honestly, this play was meaningless. This play was an actual active waste. Um, so, like, a meaningless play. So we just want to be that little bit more active. I did say um, we'll go over quick scoping. So let me load that up. And let me load up the training room. We can look at that. Like the bomb tech t-shirt, if you see me running, run faster, exactly. Like, Torbjorn just comes running out, he's like, oh, you don't want to go in there, run, run, run. And then, you know, we're, we're, we're elsewhere. And we just go, huh? Oh, shit, and then run away as well. Anyway, chat. Start asking some questions. Uh, today, Anna, base questions, but also, like, fundamentals, I guess. Let's talk about some basics. Because I think I will phrase this as, like, coaching the many fundamentals. Um, and stuff like spawns. Uh, getting spawn advantage, ultimate usage, ultimate management. And it's important to contextualize this in terms of like rank as well, because this was very like, this was bronze rank, right? This is as low as you can get in terms of like the, the rank steps. And the way you get out of bronze, in my mind, isn't necessarily like huge team plays, right? It's not necessarily knowing about stuff like pressure and ultimate advantage, it is going to be largely mechanics, because if you are just fundamentally better at killing people, or healing people, you'll probably climb out of it very quickly. And that's sort of where I stand on that. Um, let's make sure we're on this screen instead of the other one. Training, practice range. Let at the practice range, go talk, go look at Anna. Use your golden weapon. Never. And so what I mean by like being active is if you watch sort of the gameplay from the, the coach E today, a lot of it was just sort of doing this. And then you'd see like flurry of activity coming up. And then it would be like moving, considering, moving. And it would be, and generally like you wouldn't see movement on the mouse either when they're moving. It would just be like movement, then adjustment on the mouse. Whereas when you watch people who are a bit higher level, it's usually a lot more free movement, and you'll see stuff like this happening a lot more. Where we're repositioning, but being active while doing so. And you'll see us actually doing, like, repositioning and healing at the same time, and then looking for threats and doing things like that. And it's all very fluid and mobile, and stuff is aggressively happening. And for example, if I wanted to get into cover, but I still am worried about these two, I'll be pulling back and healing, and then as I get closer and closer to cover, I'll be scoping in more and more and more. So sort of getting into cover and then scoping in and just relying on the scope to do the healing. Then go, oh god, there's a threat. Sleep it. Pull out. Hey, guys, there's this thing over here. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Oh no, Genji's dead. No, nano boosted. Ah! Roll play. This is all very loud as well. I apologize if we just blown your ears out, because I just blew mine out. Um, it probably wouldn't sound too bad to you. It's very loud in my ears because of me changing my volume settings. Right, coaching time. Um, let's 